Well, it was not a very good childhood. Um, my sisters and I were abused, you might say. Nowadays, they probably would be in jail. I'm a mom to two, to two beautiful children, um, a wife, and I am a career person. I work full-time Monday through Friday at Medford Township in the zoning department. And on weekends, I work. I have a part-time job in a retail company. So I work seven days a week. Well, I was born in Chicago, lived there oh, maybe eight years. Then I moved to California, graduated high school in Mission Viejo, California. And then I moved back to Chicago and spent all my most of, most of my adult life there. Well, I met your father and uh, in Chicago. He was at a trade convention and um, after a couple years of dating I moved out here. I really miss Chicago though. That is my home. Well, I have two sisters in the middle. I have an older sister who is a year older and a younger sister that is two years younger than I am, um, and a mother and a father. From the time I can remember being a young child, two years old, I remember my mother and father beating me, and um, one time my mother, I know this is going to sound really bizarre, but my mother threw me a radiator, you know, the heating radiators, and it cut my head, and she just taped my head with scotch tape. And we were constantly beat, we were constantly um, made to stay in the house, we could not have any friends over, we had to be in bed by 7 p.m., and we were 17 years old. And there's just so many, there's numerous things that they did to us. And we had this dog, this poodle that was very high strung. And when my parents would beat us, the dog would also bite us. And they would not prevent that dog from biting us. Um, and we have huge scars, my sisters and I, you know, to show for that dog. Even after all these years, we still have scars from that dog. Um, I was an average student. I, I didn't really care about school because my home life was so sad that I didn't it, it didn't I didn't want to excel in anything. I guess I was majorly depressed. Well, I remember in home economics, which I don't know if you had in high school, but I made this dress that I really liked, and my mother saw it that morning. I mean, it was just a sundress, nothing you know um, fancy and she tore it up in shreds just because I liked something. She just would have her fits and she just tore it up and I cried hysterically because that was something that I worked so hard on and um, and she just ruined it. And I remember, you know, that they would go out to the store, my mother and father, and we were not allowed to do anything but sit in our rooms and if we watched television, they would know because they would put their hand on the television to see if it was warm. And if it was warm, they would know that we watched television and then we'd get beat again. It just wasn't... It wasn't a normal childhood. I mean, my mother would constantly make us look um, odd. She'd cut our hair where it would be like an inch high on top. She knew we'd be made fun of. We would be bullied constantly in school and she would just, you know, love that, that we were made fun of. I mean, to me, if you have children, you want to protect them and make sure that, you know, they look nice. And maybe if you don't have enough money to buy them the latest clothes, at least you know that you're not making them look and stand out, you know. I remember my mother 
grabbing me one day because she was upset with something, some tiny minuscule thing, and she just grabbed my hair and got the scissors and just chopped it right there. And it was like really short in the back. And then she invited her neighbor over to come look at her, what she did, and they were both sitting there laughing. And I'll never forget that. You know, it was sad for me. I was crying hysterically because I had to go to school like that. You know, it's like, do these people care about their children? It's unbelievable to me. I don't know. I don't know how anyone could treat anyone like that, even if they're, they're your children or not. In high school, um, I really like this guy. His name was Burke. I mean, you remember, you remember back to those days, you know, you just do. And he, I'll never forget, he asked me out on the day before we were moving, leaving um, California, going back to Chicago. And my parents had this rule that if you wanted to go out with anyone, they had to come over two days before the date. So I brought him over two days before the date. I walk, I left him at the front door. I walked around the back to prep them, to let them know that somebody was there, you know, could, they, could he come in? My mother started screaming and yelling, saying, get the hell out of here, you know. I mean, this poor kid, he must have thought we, this was from a horror film, this family. Um, and needless to say, I, I never went out with him. I was always, you know, kind of sad about that. And I, back then, going out, you just walked to some place. You, you know, we didn't have cars. Um, but uh, I do remember that. That was humiliating. And um, I just remember the constant abuse. We were so secluded as kids in the house that we didn't know what the outside world thought. We couldn't, it was like we were being kidnapped or something. We couldn't do anything. All we could do was clean. That's all we did. We'd, she'd literally watch us, and we'd have toothbrushes in the corners where the walls meet the carpet, cleaning the carpeting in the corners with toothbrushes all day. And that was what we did. And we weren't rewarded or paid or anything. We, we used to be woke up in the middle of the night when we were sleeping, screamed at by her, telling us that something was left dirty. We'd have to get up in the middle of the night to clean. My sisters and I would almost sometimes go to bed dressed because we'd constantly be woke up. It, it, you know, sleep was our only escape. And, and even that wasn't, you know, pleasant or safe for us. You know, and they'd often talk, she'd, she would often talk about who would we choose if they split up. And we didn't want to choose either one. Because if we, God forbid, we chose the wrong person, we'd get beat. So we had a, we were t told to choose. And of course, we all said, I choose you, Mom. Even though we wouldn't. You know, out of the two, I guess we'd rather choose my father. But we knew we'd be, get beat the shit out of us if we chose him. So of course, we all lied and said, yeah, we'll live with you, Mom. Well, I knew I was moving out. My girlfriends and I, I was, I graduated at 17 and I got a job. I was working in an office and I met some friends and we all got together and decided to rent an apartment together. So on my 18th birthday at five o'clock in the morning, a cab, you know, I lived in Chicago and that's what you did. You traveled in cabs or bus. I was waiting outside to pick me up and I had all my clothes in a paper bag all my belongings, what little I had, and left and never went back. Well, I left a note. My mom got up. She heard me moving around, and I didn't say anything to her. I just left. And after I moved out, they still would call me and ask me for room and board. After I had moved out, they wanted money from me. I had to pay them $25 a week out of my earnings before I moved out. That was $100 a month, and I was only making like 200 at the time. So they wanted half of my um, earnings. My younger sister, Debbie, she, she was extremely sad because she was left. You know, Carol, my older sister, she was n another, you know, clone of them. I mean, she would just, any little thing we did, she would tell them, and then we'd get beat. I mean, she was just the police instead of a sister. Whereas Debbie and I, 
we were very close and we still are. Um, and she left also on her 18th birthday when she turned 18. I don't think she left at 5 in the morning, but she left later that day. I worked at Sears. Back then, Sears was big um, in their catalog department. So I, I put the helped put the catalogs together. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Sears catalog, but it's quite big. And um, I helped do that, and I really enjoyed it. And I've always worked since I was 17 years old. So there's just so many. That's why I think I, you know, I've been lenient with you and your brother because my childhood was so devastating and abusive that I might be going the opposite direction with you kids, giving you almost everything that you want within my power. Um, but I just don't want you to suffer like I did. You know, and it's amazing. I'm sane as I am. Most people would be in a loony bin. Well, I'm going to be 60 next month. I moved out when I was 18. So there's quite a few years, and I've seen them twice in that amount of time, which is pretty sad. I mean, it makes you, you kids, not have grandparents, really. My sister and I have not spoken to them or visited them or anything since we both moved out. Uh, once I went on vacation with a boyfriend, we drove to California, so I thought, what the heck, you know, go visit them, might surprise them. And, um, and the second time they had fl flown into sh to Chicago for a funeral of a relative, so. They were the same, kind of critical, you know, if you didn't have something just right on you, they would say something, you know, n never praising. You know, you never felt confident, at, you know, that I think my sister Debbie felt more confident, but I never felt confident. I think that's to this day why I don't feel confident about things. I really, it's sad to say, but I don't know if my parents are even alive or, or, um, and you don't hear too much of that. I don't know, maybe everybody's quiet about it. They don't talk about it. You know, you see in Thanksgiving, everybody's families are together, and my family, you know, is shattered. I I could never abuse my children, um, and I think that that's just the kind of person I am. I couldn't abuse anyone, but I think that has to do with why I chose the wrong men in my life. But um, I think that... That was why I made poor choices, you know, just trying to grab onto anyone who seemed to care, you know, and then in the end they really didn't care. So, but I'm grateful I have you and your brother. I mean, I just want the best for you and Brandon. Yeah. I mean, it would give me great pride and happiness to know you and Brandon are happy and fulfilled and content and healthy, you know. Well, I think, obviously, you know, the lessons that I've learned is simply how to, how to treat people and, you know, to be kind to one another and especially your family. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad my sister and I are close and um, that I'm close to you and your brother and hope to always be close. Um, but it's just, it's just a shame that things like that were allowed to go on. And if anything, I hope there's no abuse. I wish there was no abuse in the world of any kind.